So I wanted to take a few minutes to just answer a couple of questions that have came in from members of Speed Coding Academy. Somebody had asked about many-to-many -many relations, so I'll just quickly discuss that, okay? Now, when you have two uh, modules, let's say A or B, they can only ever be related one of three ways. They can have what's called a one-to-one -one relationship, a one-to-many, or a many too many relationship. Now do not confuse this with table joins. A table join is just a statement that happens to get used to make one of these different scenarios happen. But nevertheless, it's inescapable and undeniable that these are the three ways that something, or two things rather, can be related in the IT universe. So if you think about a one-to-one -one relationship, classic examples would be passports, and something like citizens, you know? Or how about um, perhaps driving licenses uh, and drivers, that type of thing, you know? So one driving license gets assigned to one driver and so on, you know? That would be uh, classic examples of a one-to-one -one relationship. So one of these gets assigned to one of these and one of these gets assigned to one of these. That's pretty much the uh, way that would go. A one too many is an example that you'll see all the time. So think about cars, for example. You could have a manufacturer, let's say, a manufacturer, so something like, let's say, BMW, and they could have lots of different models. So they could have things like a 3 Series, a 5 Series, etc. Now, the manufacturer, one manufacturer like <laughs> BMW, they can have lots of models, but each of the model records, the car models in this case, can only ever have one man manufacturer. So that's called a one-to-many, and you'll see this all over the place. Now, many-to-many -many is an interesting one. A classic example of this would be, let's say it's an online shop, and it's something like item colors being assigned to uh, items. So have a think about this. You could have a shop, let's say, that has phones for sale, right? And perhaps the phone is available in black, maybe red, and maybe blue, and maybe even silver, right? Well, that same shop could potentially have a teapot for sale that happens to be available in red and green and blue and it might even have a laptop that you can buy which is also silver and black and red. Now, when you look at the logic here, the phone, that one item, right, so this is the items, it has more than one, so we can say that this side can have many of these but look at it from the perspective of the colors here. Take, for example, red. Here's red. And the color red is being used, look at this, one, two, three times. And so we now have the possibility for many things on one side to be assigned to many things on the other side. And that's called a many-to-many -many relationship. So here's our store items table, for example. And let's imagine that we've got a store item colors table that might go something like this, okay? Now, if we want to associate this table with this table, then from a database perspective, the easiest way to do this, by a mile actually, is to have what's called a bridging table or a pivot table that connects these two. So you might call it something like items to colors, let's say. And what this table would have, like I say, you'll, you'll sometimes hear it called a pivot table or a bridging table that bridges the two things together. And so here you can see that it's got a store item ID. So that would connect, this ID from store items would connect to that. And the color ID would connect to that. So now we have joined these two tables together and we can produce uh, an SQL query from that that looks a bit like this. And so now 
if we want to associate colours with items, the nice thing is we don't need to change this table or this table, we can simply add an entry onto this one here. Now unfortunately building that type of thing normally takes ages, but thankfully in the case of the Trongate framework it's pretty straightforward. So for example I'll create a new app and I'll just call it, um, I don't know, a test app, right, whatever. And we can give it a base URL let's say, so I'm just going to go localhost a ah, test app, I mean you can call it anything you want at all. Are we going to use a database? Yes we are. So here's some connection details and I'm going to choose a location for this app. Ok, so it's now downloading the latest version of the framework and setting up the database as well. And that's that. So I'm going to just say OK and immediately I'm going to create a new module. So I'll say modify existing app and I think it was called a test app, so here it is here. So I'm going to hit modify, I'm going to create a new module and I'll just say store item. And for the purposes of simplicity, we'll have it saying manage store items and with some kind of icon on it, it doesn't really matter what actually. Now let's add some properties and I'm just going to have item title, that'll do me for the moment. I suppose I could add item price, ok I'm going to submit that and uh, we'll have a URL column of item title let's say and I'll order things according to title ascending and I'm generating. Ok, so that's now generated the store items database table with full crud and everything, right? We can then do the same for store item colours, let's do that right now. So I'm going to say OK and I'll create a new module. So I'll just call it, let's say, item colour or actually maybe we'll just go with store item colour. Ok, so again I'll just have a really simplistic thing going on here. So I'm choosing an icon, doesn't really matter what it is. And I'll just say colour title. Ok, so at this point in time we've created a new web app and we've set up full crud so for example here's store items and we can add on a title, so I'm going to say first title and here's the price, like so, and I've just created that record, right? We can also add comments and stuff pretty easily, right? So that's nice, but we can also have colours, so I'm going to create a, a colour record, let's say red, let's have another, maybe blue, something like that, ok? So that's what we've just created and if we looked in the database, let's do it right now actually. So here's our database, this was all set up automatically. Here's our store items and it's all ready to go and here is store item colours and it's all ready to go as well. Interestingly, we've also got a full API manager. If I go to API Explorer store items, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of endpoints that are all ready to go as well. So that was all just created in a matter of a few minutes. But the question is, how do we link these things? For example, how do we link uh, st store items with store item colours? Well, remember the theory that I gave you a minute ago? We need to have a bridging table added that's going to join them. That is if it's a many to many relationship. Now in the case of the Trongate framework, we can say create module relation and we can choose many to many and module A is going to be store items, module B is going to be store item colours and it's going to ask for an identifier column. This is just something that will help us to recognise it. So I can say item title, 
here and colour title here generate and what this is doing is it's generating that bridging table and doing all of the relationships for us in an instant. So if I go back to the page now, let's say with store items, now I can associate this with an item colour, like say red and hit associate. I can do it again and associate with blue or I can disassociate. I can also go over to the colours and I can say alright, so let's have a look at Let's say for example red and you'll see that immediately it has been associated with the first item and we can disassociate and everything just works. And if I go back to the database by the way and just show you what's happening here, you'll see that we've got a new table with a very long name associated store items and store item colours but if you have a look at that it's exactly the same structure that I had mentioned uh, here in Navicat and so what is going on here is that Trongate is creating the bridging table and doing all of the validation, all of the form creation, all of the custom endpoints, even all of the security and it's all happening in an instant. And of course if I had more than one item, let's have a second one, maybe even a third one then it's no problem, the whole thing stands and the many to many relationship vibe is solid. So here for example I can have red assigned to the first item and the second item, doesn't matter at all. Even if I choose the third item you'll see that there's no more available so that assign option disappears and if I disassociate that's cool. Both sides link up fantastically and all three relationship types are handled brilliantly. In the case of a one-to-one -one relationship by the way, well that if you were going to do that slightly different, there you get a choice, do you want to create a bridging table, yes or no. If you say yes it will create that bridging table that I've just shown you, sometimes called a pivot table and if you say no it will add extra columns onto the database. Once again you don't have to worry about this. Using the Trongate framework frees you up from having to worry about table join security, building endpoints, building admin panels and understanding relationships. So let's have a quick look at the code that was actually produced with all of that stuff. We had a store items module that was created and uh, here it is here and anyone who's familiar with Codeigniter let's say might think this looks quite familiar. Syntax is not exactly the same, it's a bit more economical here but here's our um, for example some sort of show item <laughs> item information page, you can see the views here. So here's that, it's just simple HTML you know. Here's our create view file, so there's the form right there and uh, that would be called from a function called create. You can see that this is calling upon the security as well, all of that's handled if you look closely you'll see a folder called assets and here's where you can store things like images or CSS files, JavaScript files, anything you want. In this case I've got a file called api.json and in here I've defined all of the API endpoints for this particular module or table and I've also defined the rules that I would like these to have. So for example the get endpoint, well you must be an administrator to access that endpoint. Here's the one for associated store items and store item colours. Now this um, will not mean much but here for example is the API definitions which are being called uh, complete with security I might add. Uh, here's the controller file that you'll never look at but just so that you know that it's there. Here it is and you can see that it's performing all sorts of uh, elaborate SQL joins and all sorts of stuff that you really don't even need to worry about. And that's the whole point of the Trongate framework. It's a bit like hiring 30 versions of you on your very best day.